All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about this. Ladies and gentlemen, the brand director at Cinch Simple Texting, Alfredo Salkhead. <laughs> Give him some love from the crowd. Alfredo, what's going on? I'm ready to get started, Thomas. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Let's get going. Let's get going. But real quick, everyone, make sure you put those questions in the Q&A tab. And we'll make sure uh, we get this last session going today. Super excited about it. Should be pretty stinking awesome. Alfredo is going to be talking about underdog uprising, SMS strategies to punch above your weight. Alfredo, I'm going to go and let you take it going. Take it, uh, take it ahead here in just a moment. But uh, let me know if you need anything, and I'll see you all towards the end. All right? Thanks, Thomas. Email campers, let me warn you right now, if anyone here doesn't think that a small business can have a big impact, you're about to get a roundhouse kick of knowledge straight to the noggin. Okay, I don't think I can keep up the, uh, the character for the whole talk, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to, to my normal self. Uh, so who am I? Who, who's this person who you've come to hear talk? Uh, my name's Alfredo. Six years ago, I joined a company called Simple Texting which is now part of Cinch. Simple Texting provides text message marketing software specifically for small businesses. Um, and six years ago, when I would tell people where I worked, consistently the response was like, oh, so are you the reason that I'm getting those spam messages? Like the whole idea of companies texting uh, customers has really changed a lot over the last six years, right? Like before the only time you text with the brand in 2003, uh, 2003, American Idol season two started doing that whole text in your vote thing. And I think this was like the early stages of brands interacting with a customer over text. And then when brands saw how um, impactful texting is because people read their texts really quickly, uh, it started to become a little bit of a free for all. And what at the time, the way brands would send text was you'd have a bunch of different brands all sending from the same number. So it'd be like a, a six digit number and you'd be getting messages from lots of different companies from that same number. Number It was called a shared short code. And at the time, texting was seen as really spammy. And then carriers came in and they started to adopt stricter requirements and brands actually had to register in order to be able to send messages. Um, but still, texting was kind of seen as a, as a one-way channel, just a spray and pray type of channel. Now you look today and you've got pretty much every major brand is starting to take advantage of texting. And the ones that are doing it well are also using it as a two-way channel. They're using it as a way of interacting with customers, not just sending out one-way information. Uh, every year at Simple Texting, we do a survey where we ask uh, business owners a variety of questions about how they're using texting. And this year, we found that 45% more businesses are using text marketing compared to the same time two years ago. So more brands than ever are now competing for space within the SMS inbox. When I first started working in, in this industry, it was kind of seen as, you know, uh, everybody's using email, but SMS is like this unknown channel that if you use it, all you got to do is send texts and you're going to, you know, see sales go up. And now, right, similar to email, pretty much most brands are doing it. So you have to uh, stand out in order to compete. And most brands are doing the same exact thing with their text messages. If you look at the text that brands are sending, like these are three actual messages that I've gotten. And it's kind of the same thing over and over. 30% off for the kids, 40% off, 15% off all new arrivals, 20% off the entire site. It tends to just be discounts. And when I look at um, how most brands collect opt-ins, what I see is you go to their site, there's a pop-up that says, you know, sign up for our text messages and get X percent off. And I kind of always consistently sign, sign up for the text because I don't wanna miss the discount but then I often opt out really quickly. So in order to compete with texting, you don't need to offer a bigger discount. Oftentimes you don't need to offer a discount at all. And the answer is also not to start texting 
more often. My theory here, what this talk is about, is that to win with text messaging, you have to get creative. And quick plug, uh, myself and Danny Henyon, also at Simple Texting, we host a podcast called Shoestring. And the premise of this show is on each episode, we talk to a small business, we find out what challenges they're facing, and we try to brainstorm creative ideas to help them. And as a result, we've kind of come up with a little bit of process for how to think about getting creative with text messaging. So let's get into that. Fundamentally, there's only three levers that you can pull, I think, with texting, kind of three areas that you can get creative in. There's your promotion. So this is how and where you're advertising, the fact that you have an SMS program. So you can think of this as printed materials. I'll see restaurants, for example, have table tents where you text in a keyword in order to sign up for texts. This can also be the opt-in form on your website, anywhere where you're advertising and asking people to sign up for your messages. Then there's the incentive, right? People know that their phone number is valuable. So they don't wanna just hand it out for nothing. They want something of value in return. So as with those three examples that I showed on the last slide, right? you see a lot of people offering a discount, but that's the second bucket where you can get creative. What value are you offering to the audience in exchange for their phone numbers? And then the third bucket is what are you sending? Beyond just that initial sign up text, what are the messages that you're sending out um, periodically in order to keep up engagement and retention. If you can think about how to get creative in each of those three buckets, you're gonna set yourself up for success. So let's take a look at some examples. I'm gonna show you businesses that we've worked with on our podcast Shoestring that have gotten creative with either their promotion, their incentives, or their messages, or a mix of the three. So this is John Livria. John, one day he was at Lowe's and he bought a, a microgreens growing kit. He tried to grow these little salad greens in his kitchen. It wasn't working for him. So he went outside, he tossed it uh, in the yard. And then a couple weeks later, he had all these microgreens growing in his yard. And then suddenly from there, he got hooked. He decided to quit his job and start this business growing microgreens. He got a whole facility with lights, the whole shebang in order to just go all in on growing these tiny greens. And when we spoke to him, uh, we asked, you know, what's your challenge? And he said, people just don't know what microgreens are. People come up to him at the farmer's market and they go, what the heck are microgreens? And so he said, I just need to spread the word across the city that microgreens are a thing. The easy way of doing this, of course, would have been a pop-up on the site. If you wanted to collect SMS opt-in, would have been a pop-up on the site where he asked for phone numbers and says, you know, get a free sample of microgreens or 10% off. But we started thinking about what's unique about his business, what's unique about microgreens. And we thought about the fact that microgreens, as John taught us, have a ton of nutrition and a really, uh, you know, they're, they're nutrition dense. So we decided to pitch that he set up these tiny billboards across the city, tiny billboards for tiny greens. Uh, microgreens may be small, but they're a big deal. Text greens to 833-455-4575 to learn more. So the idea was, right, you, you're on a shoestring budget. You can't do something big. Go small because that's aligned with the actual thing that you're doing. So just an example of getting creative with the promotion of this. Then what about uh, what he should actually send? Um, John is just naturally really passionate about the whole process of growing microgreens. And he felt like education was at the key of what was gonna unlock growth for his company. So we suggested rather than just um, sending out when you have microgreens available, you can also use this as an educational channel and send out these farm to phone updates, show the process of things growing in your facility. So in this text, we say, did you know it takes just seven days for arugula seeds to sprout into lush microgreens? Here's a sneak peek at our seedling trays this morning, bursting with new growth, growth from tiny seeds to your table. We're committed to freshness every step of the way. So kind of educate people so that when you do send out a discount or you are encouraging someone to buy 
they're, they're primed. Here's another example, right? Some of the feedback was people weren't sure what to do with the microgreens beyond just adding them to a salad. He had content on his website. He already had these recipes that he was posting on social media. And so we suggested bringing that information into the messaging channel. Um, usually when I'm talking to companies figuring out what to send, they're trying to get creative with what they send. I ask them like, what are you an expert in? Everybody's an expert in something. So, you know, put that information into your messages. Here's a, another company we've worked with, Makers Collective. They're actually a nonprofit run by this woman, Lib Ramis, and they help support local makers. So think of uh, people who make pottery or leather goods or any sort of craft. They put on events to help those people sell their stuff. And one of the biggest events they host is the Indie Craft Parade. You can think of this like Etsy in real life. It's this huge event where there's tons of different booths, all with these like beautiful handmade goods. Uh, Makers Collective has been around for a while and they were primarily communicating over email. And this was the first year that they wanted to start using texting. Again, easy kind of first thought would have been offer a discount on tickets if somebody signs up for text messages. But we thought about what else can you offer that's a value that doesn't require you to discount your tickets. And we thought about the actual physical space that they're moving around in. Previously, Indie Craft Parade would hand out paper maps to people so they could see what vendors were at each booth. And then we thought about what if there was a sign where someone could text in a text to join keyword and it would say, you know, text crafts to our number in order to get a PDF of the map or an image of the map sent to your phone and you'll be signing up, signing up for future discounts. And they did that and we're seeing a lot of people sign up on the day of the event. But of course, right, sign up is just that first step. So again, what do you actually send after that? Um, when talking to Lib, one of the things that she was concerned about, and I see this come up in the chat when people are talking about SMS, is I don't wanna be perceived as spammy. I think the important thing is when you're collecting opt-in is to be upfront about what people are gonna be receiving. And if you get creative with the messages that you're sending out, then you won't be perceived as spammy. Think about some, sending something that you would want to receive. Um, so again, we thought about what's something kind of unique, exclusive that we could offer to SMS subscribers. If you treat them like a priority, right? Like this is a, an elite club of people who support indie artists, what would you send out? There's actually a jury that selects who gets to participate in the Indie Craft Parade. So we suggested, what if you selected a few people who opted into your texting list and you gave them a spot in the jury so they get to decide what artists are at the parade next year? So what if you branded your whole texting program like the Indie Artists Insiders Club? That unlocks a whole set of ideas for what things you could send out. So here's an example of an MMS, a text with a photo, where they could include a link of vote here for who you should think should appear next year. At the beginning, I also mentioned um, that texting can be used as a, as a two-way channel. So we thought about that as well. Again, we thought about what resources does Makers Collective have that other companies don't have. One of those is easy access to artists. They have all these relationships with different artists. So we thought about a flash sale. Well, what if there was this like flash art event within the text messaging channel where they text out and they say, hey, this artist is taking over our messaging for the next 30 minutes. Text us the fa your favorite photo in your camera roll and we'll send you a speed drawing of that photo. Um, Think about how different this is than those three messages we saw at the beginning that are just 10% off. This makes you feel like it's really worth it to be uh, receiving text messages from this brand, like you're part of something special. Uh, 491 people signed up to receive texts from Makers Collective in their first 30 days of launching 
their program, and there's a less than 1% opt-out rate from their messages. So if you feel like texting is spammy, again, if you're creative with the way you get people to opt in and you send them content that's interesting, creative, or valuable, you're not gonna have people opting out and you're not gonna have people feeling like that's a spammy channel. And I'll show two more examples. This one is Blue Barn Pet and Hobby Farm. We also did an episode with them on Shoestring. They were doing a lot of things really well. They were using email, they were using text. They actually had a pretty sizable list. And what they were doing was within the store, they would advertise, text us and receive a free dog treat at the register. But one thing we noticed is that their entire list wasn't segmented. Uh, you know, whether you had a cat, a dog, a rabbit, fish, you were all part of one list receiving the same promotions. So we thought about what could they do that's a creative way of collecting opt-ins? And is there anything we can do so that when they're collecting opt-ins, they're also segmenting their subscriber list? Of course, the easy way to do this would be to send them to a form where you select what pets you have, but we all know how it goes when you add additional steps for the customer to do, right? There's drop-off. And then I had this aha moment where I realized every single pet owner without fail has pictures of their pets on their phone. And I thought about, is there a way we can get people to send in that photo and use that as the opt-in? So we ended up connecting their simple texting account to ChatGPT and they advertised, text in a photo of your pet and we'll text you back a custom poem about it. Plus you'll get exclusive deals. And so two things were happening on the back end. The person would text in the photo. It would go to ChatGPT, which would analyze the image, detect what animals were in it. It would send that information back into simple texting where it'd be logged as a custom field that could be then used to create a segment later on. And ChatGPT would generate a poem. We told it like generate a playful poem in the style of Dr. Seuss and Shel Silverstein, I, I believe that was roughly the prompt, and it would text back that poem. So creating this unique interaction between a small business and their customers. And they didn't have to, beyond that setup, right, that there wasn't a human who had to manage all of this. And then the other pro of this is because people were sending in photos, now they have all this user-generated content which can be used in other ways. They have like a pet calendar that they put out every year with their customers' photos and they could use this on social media. And the last example I'll share is from Robert and Maria. They're the owners of Gramercy Atelier. They are a bespoke uh, mother of the bride dress business. And they were using text messages to follow up with leads who came in through their ads. Previously, they were kind of uh, just texting, hey, I saw you filled out this form um, and that you were interested in a dress. Do you want to set up a call? And what we suggested to them was use this the same way you would use email, almost like a drip sequence where you're educating people about the brand so that when they're ready to buy, they can reach out and text you. And it was all about thinking, well, what's unique about your business? One of the things that they do that's unique is they will send you for free these swatches of fabric in the mail so that you can feel them and imagine what that dress would feel like. And then you can work with a designer one-on-one -on -one to have this dress made and designed for you remotely. So we suggested send them texts where you're kind of showing a photo of these fabric swatches that you can get, because that's a, a little bit of an easier ask for someone to order some free fabric swatches than to set up a call if they're not quite in that buying mindset. So just going back to the three elements, right? There's the promotion, there's the incentive, there's the messages. And we've seen examples of getting creative with each one. Think of John Livrio with his tiny billboards, um, Makers Collective offering out a map in exchange for phone numbers, and then um, John, uh, John sending out recipes by text messages, right? We didn't see any discounts here. You don't have to send out discounts. And I find oftentimes small businesses aren't charging enough and they don't even have the margin to really offer big discounts. So just because you can't discount your products doesn't mean that you can't use texting. These are some questions I often like to ask myself when I'm trying to get creative, when I'm working with a company. How can I turn my SMS campaign into an interactive experience? That's how we landed on some of those ideas for Makers Collective. 
I like to flip things backwards. Sometimes I find this ends up leading me to a good idea. I ask, what's the worst possible way I could solve this problem? I actually stole this from, um, what's that water brand? There's a water brand that like Liquid Death. Yes, the founder of Liquid Death, he asked himself, what's the worst possible name I could call my water company? And he came up with Liquid Death and now look how well they're doing. So I've, I've stole this question from him and it leads to some fun results. Think about someone who inspires you and think, how would you know this person approach this problem? How could I use storytelling to make my messages more engaging? What would my messages be like if they were designed to create a moment of joy or delight? What can I offer my subscribers that nobody else can? And finally, how can I incorporate elements of play into my SMS campaign? I promise you, these are questions that a lot of big brands aren't asking. So if you run a small business, or even if you're on a small team within a large business, asking yourself these questions for your SMS program, for your email program, or whatever channel you're using can really unlock a lot of creative ideas. So thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Alfredo, please? There we go. Love it, love it. How about some hand horn? <laughs> it's Q&A time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see those questions. Make sure you throw them in the Q&A tab and upvote the ones you want answered. Let me see here. Uh, okay. Let me take a look right here. All right, Alfredo. I'm thinking this one. Let me see here. This one, I love this one. Um, Tavinika, I want to know, have you noticed any generational differences with SMS? We primarily work with Gen Z. Should we be focusing on WhatsApp? Um, this is a good question. I'm sure simple texting has some data. Maybe uh, Casey in the chat can pull up our, uh, our survey. There's definitely generational differences with SMS, right? Younger generations, we see this a lot. Customers come in and they say, I'm using texting because that's how the generation I'm trying to talk to, that's how they like to communicate. Should we be focusing on WhatsApp? I think this is really a regional difference. I would say WhatsApp is quite large in the United States, but um, say most people are using SMS. Whereas if you're in another country, country, if you're in South America, WhatsApp could be a better channel for you. As I know in other countries, people kind of ignore their, their SMS. They just see it as spammy. So I think it depends on, on where you're located. Got it. Got it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely varies from location to location. Uh, okay, moving next. Let's see. Now, Fred, if you do see one before me, call it out. Let me know. We can throw that up on here. Let's see. Oh, this was an external one that I thought was really good. Do you think people are willing to sign up for text from a small local business? Are there objections to overcome? Oh, you had definitely a lot of examples of that. A hundred percent. I think people are more willing to sign up for texts from a small local business. If you think think about who who you allow into your inbox, right? You use your SMS inbox for primarily friends and family. Who feels more like a friend? Probably a small local business compared to a uh, large brand. Um, are there objections to overcome? I think anytime someone's signing up for texts, they're thinking, "Am I just going to?" receive way too many. One of the things that we recommend is in your compliance language, which shouldn't be like one point font, right? Like you should be upfront about how often are you going to text? So for example, there's a company I sign up for messages from called Red Start Foods. And they're a small business where they do food delivery and they change their menu each week. And they're upfront when you sign up for their text where they say, we're going to text you you know, every Sunday at noon, which is an hour before the cutoff of when we, um, you know, cut off orders for that week so that you can place your order. So so being upfront about how often you're going to text and what kind of messages that person can expect, I think can help reduce that feeling of, uh, should I sign up for this? Or are they just going to overwhelm me with, with messages? Got it. Got it. All right. Let me see. You got time for a few more. Let me see. I see one that how would you recommend elements of play into your SMS if your platform does not support replies? Um, I don't know if you'll like this answer, but I think your platform should 100% support replies. Uh, it's not just a simple texting thing, though, of course, I'm biased, but 
most platforms now support replies and, and every platform really should allow you to export your list and bring it to a different platform. So don't let them hold your list hostage if you're trying to switch between platforms. Exactly, exactly. That was a good one, that was a good one. Uh, and then I see one, is there a specific link shortener that you utilize? We've noticed an increased undelivered rate when we use unbranded shortened links. Yeah, this is a challenge, right? With, um, with phishing being an issue, people are anxious. You can be anxious about clicking a link within a text message. Um, there's kind of two things that come to mind here. We have, uh, within our platform, we have a built-in link shortener that we recommend people use because then it helps them actually track the click-through rate on those messages. And we help companies also then purchase a URL so that they can have a custom tiny link. But if you use things like tiny URL, a lot of times carriers will flag that as spam because they know a lot of spammers are trying to hide their links. And I think the other exciting thing that's coming, which we just heard about in the last session, is RCS, where brands are going to have to be registered. And so I think eventually, as more companies move to RCS, then there's going to be increased trust for actually clicking on, mess on links within messages. Love it, love it. Love all that, that extra authentication, love all that extra security, especially for uh, users and viewers, especially. Awesome. Well, Alfredo, you want to do one more? Uh, I think we can call it. I see one about how do you connect ChatGPT to your SMS program? Um, we use Zapier. You can get your API key from OpenAI, get your API key from Simple Texting or whatever texting program you use, and then we use Zapier to connect the two. Love it. Good old Zapier. Always reliable. All right. Alfredo, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us. Joining email camp. This is your first one. You did great. Great presentation. Loved it. Love it. Um, what do you want people to take away from today to follow along with you and everything that, that you got going in the simple texting world and most importantly, everything that you're working on? If you love this talk or if you hate this talk, Go look up Shoestring on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It'll make my day. <laughs> Love it. And give them a good review on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, all that. Make sure you check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Of course, everyone, let's get some love for Alfredo in the crowd, please. And of course, the ham horn. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Alfredo Salkhead. Alfredo, thank you so much for being here today, man. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Thomas. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap up my comments for the day and end our last session. I'll see you in just a moment.